Hi there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Boss Bounty video and welcome to episode 106 of Ask Boss Bounty. You guys know the drill by now, leave your questions in the comment section below and each week I try to answer them for you. Loads and loads of questions this week, it was actually really good fun trying to go through all the questions, reading all of your comments, but I can only pick so many to answer in each week, so if you do have a question for next week's episode and want to keep this series going, leave a question for next week's episode and hopefully you'll be featured. Of course, if you do happen to enjoy the video, don't forget to drop a like down below as well because that does help the video and the channel. It is greatly appreciated. And with all that being said, I just want to say a huge congratulations to Matt Drake. He is a Patreon supporter of mine and he actually won the giveaway which I did for my Patreon supporters and channel members. I do these kind of things every now and then and uh, this was the prize this time and these are getting quite valuable now. I think these go for about £40 on the secondary market. So congratulations Matt Drake. If you do want to become a Patreon or a channel member the links are in the description below. We do have a private Discord and you get videos early each month, things like that. And of course the more channel members and Patreon supporters that I do have allows me to do better and bigger giveaways. So congratulations Matt Drake. And all that being said, let's get on to the first question. B Brigman says, question for next week. Why do you not think that Hasbro will do many deep cut characters? They do them for Transformers all the time. Deep cover, Road Ranger, etc. Albeit many are exclusives. So I think this might come from a comment that I mentioned last week when we were talking about uh, the HasLab Rancor and the stretch goals and things like that and deep cut characters and what I mentioned about the deep cut characters that was specifically really talking about the Black Series because at the end of the day the Black Series really is a like action figure line and the people that collect it obviously expect the new characters from the new media and things like that and at the end of the day they, they can only release so many figures a year and how are they going to ever release all of Jabba's goons or all of the Cantina patrons and things like that? It's taken Hasbro years and years and years to do that in the 3.75 inch line. The Black Series, what, is seven, eight years old? And that's what I mean. The deep cut characters, the Black Series, are just a thing that really isn't going to happen anytime soon, basically. But for three and three quarter, absolutely, we should be expecting those characters because is the line for world building and things like that and they they give you the play sets and the dioramas and to fill those out you need the deep cut characters tony j says question for next week do you think hasbro could combine the upcoming figure in dan tvc figure with the troop packs to give us the complete cantina band not sure the band provides enough multiple purchases to justify the trooper packs but not sure how else we could get the band thanks and keep up the great videos tony j i think you probably hit the nail on the head there. I, I think that that's what will happen. I think the figure in Dan and the rest of the band will come in a, a multi-pack of some description, probably those troop builder packs. However, what I think will happen is obviously they'll release figure in Dan first, let that sell through, make sure all the carded collectors pick him up, make sure other people pick him up. And then once that's sold through and they've made the money on the figure because it is all new tooling apparently, then they'll probably give you him in a troop builder pack with all the other instruments. That's kind of my feeling about it. That's what I, I sort of predict will happen, but you never know, but that's what I feel will happen. William Randall says, question for next week. Do you think Mission Fleet Line will continue next year? Have you heard any rumors? Um, it's not really something that I keep up to speed with, but I did have a quick look on Yak Face's website and there are sort of a couple of unconfirmed set names coming out next year so i presume it's still a thing for next year now we couldn't have an ask boss bounty episode without talking about the rancor recently um obviously it's a big topic in the community and there is a few questions about the rancor and the first one comes from denny king he says question for next week do you think that what looks like a failure on the black series rancor will have an effect upon the vintage collection going forward either negative or positive and randy s says something similar he says hey boss question about the haslab rancor campaign do you think if this campaign either fails or limps across the line that hasbro will learn the wrong lesson from this as they have before and it will negatively affect tvc and this is a genuine fear i feel sometimes i do get the feeling that they learn the wrong lessons as randy says there in terms of what is successful in one scale and what maybe not in another and Oh, that kind of thing really does get me because essentially if the Rancor fails, that does not mean, Hasbro, that we do not want creatures in 3.75. We do not want any more Haslabs in 3.75. I think we've proved that the Haslab model for the Vintage Collection is something that works. I mean, everyone has their opinion about these whole crowdfunded things in the first place, but essentially where we are right now in 2021 going into 2022, 
if you want those dream items like the barge, like the Razor Crest, those kinds of things, then unfortunately HasLab is the way. And if we want a massive sand crawler in the future, if we want X, Y, and Z, then it may have to go down the HasLab route. And we just don't want the wrong lesson to be learnt that essentially, you know, HasLabs are a failure in Star Wars or whatever. And if it fails, hopefully the lesson they do take from it is that maybe the Black Series and HasLab projects isn't the way to go. As I mentioned before, for me, it's an action figure line. I don't really see where they need these huge vehicles. I mean, it'll just be it'd just be ridiculous in terms of even just your collection room and where they go and where you put them. 3.75 inch is the scale for vehicles, creatures, and play sets and things like that. If you want your action figures looking amazing on a shelf, then yeah, Black Series, it's great. And Jason Thornton Sornby says, do you think that Hasbro may have assumed that the Rancor would reach all tiers, and it may, and that is how they came up with the hefty price. Price equals Rancor plus Gamigar plus Bones plus Card plus Crumb plus Luke. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm not privy to their business model and their pricing and everything, but I kind of think that they price it with those scales, right? So, so what is it, nine thousand to to back it, and then what, eleven thousand for the Gammy Guard? So I assume they think that the profit that they're going to get from those extra two thousand backers will will pay for the Gamorian Guard, and so on as the stretch goals go. I think at the end of the day, the Rancor, if it hits nine thousand backers, they're not going to allow themselves to lose money on it. So I think they've priced it in with that in mind. 9,000 backers, just the Rancor, essentially pays for the Rancor. Now, people may think that it's not worth it and what have you. They compare it to other lines and things like that. All that I would say is that, you know, essentially it is a, a good looking model that's had lots of things go into it. You know, maybe too many things, things like butterfly joints in the arms. Is that really needed? I don't really know. But as I said on last week's video, the Rancor for me personally isn't something that I need or have space for in my collection. The, the stretch goals look pretty good, I've got to say, but no, I don't think, um, without knowing too much about it, I don't think they've incorporated that into the actual price of the Rancor, because there's no guarantee that they're ever going to hit that 19,000 to pay for everything. Straight out of Coruscant says, thanks BB, great video, question for next week. Have you got any new vintage collection cards recently, and are you trying to get any of the variants? Well, the most recent ones I got were these two guys here from the Clone Wars, Managed to pick those two up. Still need the rest of them from that Clone Wars uh, line, but these two are pretty good. Bit of a dodgy paint job on this guy's helmet, but looking at people that have also got this figure, it just looks like I've got I've got a dodgy one. Essentially, the rest of them look pretty good, so my paranoia about that is isn't so bad. So that's what I've picked up recently in terms of new cards. I also got this given to me by James Marland, which is awesome, and that is a variant. So when you're talking about variants, that's the error sticker of the uh, Boba Fett spelt incorrectly with the double B. Um, and when it comes to variants, so I know that my mate Nick, he he kind of likes variants and he's got himself into this position where he's got like, you know, six different Gamorrean guards, for example. I mean, that that's pretty cool and everything, but it's not, it's just not for me. I, I, that's not really how I collect. Um, I'm not really after all those. I prefer the, the error cards actually. So um, this one is an error that was given to me and this one was very kindly given to me um, a long time ago now by Jeff, who is a bit of a legend, um, and that's an up upside down clone trooper, which was, which was pretty pretty odd. So yeah, that's the kind of things. I mean, I guess they're not variants really; they're more like uh, miscards or you know factory errors. That's kind of the more thing that I'm like to pick up rather than full on variants. Of course, I guess it probably would be cool to have you know one of each of the uh, North American and European versions of the card, like with the dual name pills and things like that. But um, at the moment, I'm just happy just to have one of each. Matthew Martin says, awesome show as usual and some great questions. Thank you, Matthew. My question is, what is currently on top of your most wanted list for your collection? Oh dear, that's very, very difficult. Um, I'm gonna do a video at the beginning of next year for my collecting goals for 2022. I did one at the beginning of this year and I've actually done pretty well. I've actually picked up quite a lot of the things that were on that list. So. I don't know, like more things for my Bosque focus, uh, particularly in from the vintage side of things. I would love a Bosque on a Palatoy card, which is going to be pretty expensive. Um, in terms of the vintage collection, I'm missing like maybe one or two now from the original TVC 1.0. And I guess the biggest one out of that lot is the uh, Shea Vizsla. I'm not too worried about Ahsoka now because she's getting reissued and I'd be totally fine with that card back. 
Uh, but Shea Vizsla, will that one ever get re re reissued? I'm, I'm not so sure. So that's probably one that's top of my list that I'll be hunting down. Django Mall says, question for next week. What five figures would you want from Attack of the Clones anniversary next year? And do you think they will release a Django version of Slave 1? Well, the first part of your question there, um, I will save for another video because when I was doing my finish the 96 series, I was getting a lot of comments as that series was coming to an end saying, you know, what are you going to do next? Maybe, maybe let us know your most wanted figures for that weren't in the original 96, that were never made by Kenner, that are yet to come out in the vintage collection. And of course, that's, you know, a lot of people do that sort of thing. And yeah, I'll be doing videos on that sort of thing, my, my most wanted. But in terms of the Django Slave 1, do you know what? The more I think about that, the more I think that's a possibility. I'm looking at my Slave 1 right now, and I'm thinking to myself, Attack of the Clones, Hasbro, Repaint, all of those things go together, don't they, for next year? You've got the Book of Boba Fett, where the Slave 1 will be in it, because we did see it in the sort of teaser that we saw just yesterday, I think it was. So everybody loves the Slave 1, and I can see them doing that, you know. To get a vehicle out next year, an easy one for them to do, I can see them doing that. It, of course, it probably means a new Django Fett, which would be awesome. Mark D1967 says question for next week. This might have been covered before, but whatever happened to the TVC188? That number seems to be missing from my collection and from future pipeline reveals. So I'm not 100% sure about this, but I kind of figure that it's going to be the Death Trooper that's included in the in the cantina. I originally thought that it might be Antok Merrick and it and it wasn't. But we're so far along now that I feel that it can only be that Death Trooper really. Um he was announced quite a lot a long time ago so yeah I, i'm putting my money on it being that figure but you never know with the numberings luke fernley says question for next week do you think the demand for the old republic trooper and its re-release next year could incentivize hasbro to also re-release other old republic figures perhaps even release some new ones it's entirely possible uh i think it's a you know this figure here is a, is a favorite of many and it was quite an expensive one on the secondary market and now they're going to reissue it, which is which is great for people that don't have it, of course. Will it incentivize them? I don't know. It depends how many are ordered. If there's a figure that they could repack or retool quite easily to do. I think when it comes to new ones from the Old Republic, I think we might have to wait for Disney to, you know, release a show or something. Which there was a rumor about. A rumor was around for a Old Republic show or movie. I can't remember which, but... Yeah, so I think you probably have to wait for that unless there's, as I say, some simple repaints, retools that they could do uh, to get more of these sorts of people out. Dennis Smith says, not a question, just a thought. The amount of plastic they are using in the Black Series Rancor could have been used to make a vintage collection fat Bib Fortuna. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I probably would have taken that instead, to be honest. That's good. Very good, my friend. TK421 says, any idea why some figures such as the recent Lando, IG-11 and Emperor hit store shelves a month ago, but the same figures pre-order from Hasbro Pulse won't be shipping until February? It's frustrating to keep waiting when others are already playing with their toys. Thanks, and I look forward to your videos each week. So the way I understand Hasbro Pulse is that essentially it's, it's just another retail partner, if you like. Um, obviously the same company, but it's their like retail arm. And the reason you're probably finding them in Target and Walmart may be something to do with them respecting old relationships and making sure that those stores have those figures first. I mean, it's the same in the UK, my friend. We still do not have that wave. A good friend of mine, Gary Moore, uh, made sure I was able to get them from the States. He sent them over to me, but I'm waiting for my carded version still. And we, we do not have that wave. And that's any of our retailers. So not just Hasbro Pulse, but also with Hasbro Pulse, I do find that they often bring the dates forward. So I only got an email the other day telling me that one of my figures is now going to be available or coming to me or being shipped or whatever on the 16th of December, for example. And that was going to be next next year. So that was a nice surprise. So I wouldn't always go by the dates that your Hasbro Pulse is telling you because they are always subject to change. All right then guys, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters and channel members for the continued support. Thank you all for watching for the continued support as well. Just watching my videos is awesome and I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to tune in to future videos. Drop a like down below if you've enjoyed the video and we shall see you on the next one. <music>